Did you have a comment? If you'd give your name and address, please. My name is Kelly Bark. I live at 507 Clearwater Court. Um, I just wanted to address this issue. I've been watching it on TV. I've read it in the paper, and, you know, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mike just called this a whitewash. I think this is just really sad that this is in our community because I feel like Mayor Elam uh, has just raised the standard here in Mount Juliet. Uh, I have nothing at stake except for just the honor of our city. I hate to see it go backwards. Uh, we, as citizens, paid for a lawyer to investigate this. People were under oath. Are we saying they were lying? I think that we went about it in absolutely the right way. What other way could we have gone about it? I think that there's some bad blood here. I think there's some good old boy politics that wants to remain. Uh, and I think that uh, Linda uh, is very ethical. And I think that rubs some people the wrong way because she doesn't back down. And uh, personally, I very, very much appreciate it. And I think that as the citizens of Mount Juliet, we should support our mayor. We should support everyone who is in a position to run the city of Mount Juliet because uh, I could be wrong here. I think the mayor gets paid $6,000 a year. It's a 24-7 job. I think that we should be... Um, supporting the people in office so that they will stay in office and want to do a good job. It's hard to keep good people, and I don't think we'll keep good people that put all the hours that I've seen Mayor Elam put into this city. Her heart is in this city. She is ethical. Yes, she's stubborn because she wants things done. She <coughs> wants to raise the level of Mount Juliet, and I think she's certainly done that. Thank you. Thank you. Give your name and address, please. Art Giles, 1502 Post Oak Point. Um, I spoke last week because I was just, I couldn't believe what I'd heard. And I wasn't going to speak tonight. But through the week, and I try to be, you know, I'm on the planning commission. And because of, because of these complaints, I mean, I will not even talk to any developer out here. You know, unless it's in this planning commission when we meet. Because I don't want anything brought up to me like this. But this week someone said, you know, and, and you hear these people in the community talk, and I didn't think about this, and I was waiting for someone to bring this up tonight, especially a woman, and no one did, so I'm going to bring it up. What you hear in the community is because Mayor Elam is, a, is an attorney, and because she's, you know, she's very intelligent, and because she can intimidate people, not, not purposely, uh, people feel like that's what's happened. And I believe that if Ms. Flowers was a, was a man, then there wouldn't be any question about her report. So, you know, no one else brought it up, but that's what people's talking about in the community. So I'm going to bring it up. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Okay. Seeing no hands. I have a statement I would like to read, <coughs> and I want to say exactly what I mean, so I will read it. I speak tonight to both the Commission and the citizens watching, whether here in person or on TV. I believe that a little background is in order to put this complaint against me into perspective. <coughs> in the spring of 2006, a complaint was filed against Hatton Wright, the Director of Public Works, by a city employee who alleged a hostile work environment. An investigation was undertaken, which then City Manager Shear supervised. Mr. Shear found there was no merit to the employee's complaint and transferred her to a position in the Parks Department that required significantly different hours and duties. She then appeared before this commission to state her objection to that transfer, resigned her position, and then filed suit against the city. In the spring of 2007, the lawsuit was referred to mediation <coughs> and settled on April 6, 2007, with the Mount Juliet taxpayers responsible for about $35,000 
of a $47,000 settlement. On April 5, 2007, the day before the mediation, another Public Works employee, who you saw here tonight, filed a complaint against Mr. Wright with Mr. Shearer. Given what happened previously, I had every reason to be concerned about whether Mr. Shearer would take appropriate action. At the conclusion of our meeting on April 9th, I read a prepared statement concerning the settlement, the new complaint, the need for a complete investigation and independent analysis of the situation in Public Works, and of my lack of faith in Mr. Shearer's willingness to oversee a thorough and unbiased investigation. The City Commission then voted to direct the City Attorney to oversee the new investigation of the Public Works Department and report those findings directly to this Commission. The City Attorney appointed an independent investigator. That investigation <coughs> continues today. Four days later, on Friday, April 13th, <coughs> Mr. Wright notified the City Attorney that he wished to file a formal ethics complaint against me. When notified of Mr. Wright's ethics complaint on April 15, 2007, I immediately called a special meeting of this Commission for the very following night, Monday, April 16th, to get these charges out into the open. I said that night that I want the citizens of Mount Juliet to know that I would not do anything to endanger your trust, that the complaint against me was without merit and unfounded, and that that was why I had called the meeting immediately to address it. I was both pleased and gratified that the city attorney found the complaint was without merit and unfounded last Monday, May 7th. That night, the Commission voted to delay the disposition of this matter for one week to review the report. I'd like to take this opportunity to respond directly to the allegations in the complaint. One of the complaints against me pertained to Mount Juliet crossings. Mr. Wright alleged that I, quote, sought by threats and intimidation directed toward the zoning administrator and the city planner <coughs> to kill an anticipated condition or requirement on the Mount Juliet Crossings commercial development being developed by her employer. That was his allegation, end quote. In his sworn testimony to the investigator, Mr. Wright admitted that Rob Shear, the former city manager, had actually drafted the complaint against me previously. However, an examination of the sworn testimony of Mr. Wright and Mr. Shear reveals that neither of them know of any threat or intimidation by me towards anyone. Mr. Franklin, the city planner with whom I spoke, acknowledges in his testimony that at no time did I threaten or intimidate him, that our conversation was not unusual, and that we frequently spoke on such matters. Ms. Moss, <coughs> the then zoning administrator, testified under oath that we never even discussed the issue. In summary, this complaint has not one iota of evidence to support it. As to Del Webb, Mr. Wright alleges that I attempted to, quote, secure special consideration for Pulte Homes contrary to the city's ordinances and policy, end quote. The investigator asked Mr. Wright several times how I had threatened him or made him uncomfortable in a meeting that I called on behalf of a constituent with Mr. Oliver, the city planning attorney, and various other high-ranking city officials. Mr. Wright never gave an example to support his allegations and, in fact, acknowledged that I didn't say anything to make him think that his job was going to be made unpleasant for him and that I was, in fact, quite pleasant when we left the meeting. 